WebSockets using Bond that is totally integrated and does not require any package installation. That's what we're going to see in this video. So stick with me to find out more. Hello and what's up guys, medium guy here. I hope you're learning more day by day and thanks for the positive energies that I receive from the likes and subscribes and stuff like that. So right before I start this video, please don't forget to watch the previous videos in this mini video series where you can learn about the basics of the duck rise and create a file server and things like that using all the features that are integrated with BAM itself. So in this video we're going to see how to utilize the WebSocket APIs in BAN and create a simple chat application with a very simple UI. So without any delay let's get down to work. So over here I'm in the official documentation for the WebSocket in the BAM official website. As it is stated over here, Bond.serve supports server-side WebSockets with on the fly compression, TLS support, and a Bond native publish subscribe API. So moving down, here we can see how to start a WebSocket server. And actually over here we can see a very basic and simple setup to actually create a WebSocket using Bond. So as you can see over here, we've got the four main event handlers, one being the message, which is actually called whenever a message is received, the open method, which is called when a connection is made, the close method, which is actually the opposite of the open method, and actually is called whenever a connection is closed and the drain function, which means that the socket is ready to receive more data. So if I move to the VS code, over here you can see the codes that I've created for this video and actually I'll put all these files and configurations and all the stuff in my GitHub repository for which you can find the link down in the description section. So mainly I've got an index.ts file and an index.html file in the public directory which is located exactly beside the index.ts file and on the package.json I've got two scripts which will actually use the dev which will actually then be resolved to bomb-watch index.ts and actually as you can see there is no specific dependencies installed everything will be integrated out of the box inside the bun itself. So going to the index.ts file, as you can see over here, I've got my bun.serve method, which has a username as its parameter. And over here, I've got my fetch function that receives a request and a server as the input parameters and will actually return some responses. So over here, I'm trying to make a new instance of a URL from the request.url and if the url.pathname will be equal to slash chat I'll actually try to get the username from the query parameters that the client is making the request. So over here I'm trying to get the username from the query parameters of the client's requests using this function that we'll see in a moment. So over here as you can see it receives a request as an input and actually will try to parse the URL and get the query parameters and then will actually return all those query parameters. So getting back over here by calling the server.upgrade we are actually upgrading the request so basically behind the scenes one will handle all the headers that are required for the client to be able to upgrade its protocol so actually this is required in order for the client to be able to make WebSocket connections so we'll pass the request and the username as an object to this function's inputs so it'll actually return a boolean if it is true no action will be made and if it is false which means that the upgrade process was not successful, a response will be sent back to the client with the status of 400. So then over here, a file will be loaded from the base path, which is the dot slash public and index.html, which actually is a very simple UI of a chat application. 
and it'll be sent back to the client and as a result the client will be able to interact with the chat application and send messages and communicate with other connected clients so over here on the WebSocket section right beside the fetch method i've got the three main methods that i'm required to implement in order to handle the main functions of the client so over here i've got the open message and close on the open method i'll actually try to subscribe to a channel and will publish a message to that channel with this given value over here which is actually the username has entered the chat so this message will be actually published to the channel and everyone connected to that channel will be actually receiving this message so because the channel name is hard coded over here everyone will be actually connecting to the same channel so everyone will be able to communicate with each other and actually this is great like for example if you want to have more than one chat rooms or channels and things like that you can create this value dynamically and publish the relevant messages to those relevant channels that the client is actually requesting for so over here on the message method again the thing that is done is actually to publish the message to exactly the same channel with the value of the username colon the message that is received and on the close method we try to unsubscribe from the channel and actually publish another message to other clients that are connected to this channel with the message that is actually the username has left the chat so that's all the logic behind the WebSocket and all the required method and the logic that is implemented in these methods to be able to handle the WebSocket requests of the clients. So over here in the index.html file, as you can see, I've got a very basic HTML setup that actually has an area to show the messages and an input to actually grab the client's messages and a button to actually send the client message to the channel using the WebSocket connection. So next over here I've got a script tag and as you can see over here I'm getting the window.location.search and getting the username from the query parameters and over here I'm trying to create a WebSocket connection to the localhost port 8080 slash chat with the query parameter of the username with the value of the username that the client has set on the URL. So over here, I'll try to add an event listener for the message event. And if any message is received, I'll be calling the append message with the data separated by colon, which will actually be the username. And the second one will be the message itself. So this is exactly the same format that I set in the index.ts, as you can see over here. So the append message will actually try to find the message area element and try to create a message item and append it to the message area division tag. And over here I've got the send message function that is called when the client clicks on the button and actually it'll try to get the message from the input tag on the page and actually extract the message from that input again i'll try to append that message to the message area and i'll try to call the socket.send with the message as the input so basically it will be sent to the channel using the websocket connection and everyone will be receiving that message and as a result the append message for everyone will be called and the new message will be shown on the chat area division and lastly over here i set the message input that value to an empty string so that's all the logic behind the client side websocket handler so right now if i go and try to run the project so i'll move to the terminal hit ls i've got the socket directory that holds all the websocket project files so by using the docker run command and passing in the socket directory to inside the home bun app inside the container and exposing the 8080 port to outside the container and by using the bun official image also by executing the sleep command for 10 hours i'll be able to have my container up and running for 10 hours 
and I'll be able to interact with that container which has bun installed in it so if I hit enter I'll say docker ps a I'll say docker exec dash it I'll pass in the container name and a bash at the end to be able to create a bash session inside the container so if I hit ls you can see all my project files exists over here so if I say bun run dev the relevant command will be run loading the .m file which actually holds the port which is set to 8080 and as a result the project will be run on the 8080 port and I'll be able to access that project outside the container network so right now my project is up and running and if I go to the browser I'll try to hit the localhost port 8080 and pass in the username query parameter as the test and I'll actually create another tab with another username and exactly when I make a request over here you can see that it says Sinawik has entered the chat so if I try to type in some random string over here if I send the send button you can see that the client side WebSocket connection is exactly working as expected sending the message to the WebSocket server and WebSocket server publishes that message to all the sessions that are created to that exact hard-coded channel and as a result on the other users we can see that the message is received ex exactly as expected and again vice versa if I type in something over here hit the send button you can see that it is sent with my exact username to the other clients that are connected to that exact same channel so it won't make any difference how many clients are connected to that channel if I say hello hit send you can see that the both other clients will be able to receive that message so that's all for this video if you have any questions any recommendations of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below also don't forget to watch other videos in this mini video series about bun actually you can find how to dockerize it and some other cool videos about bun and also don't forget to give a visit to my channel where you can find other videos about other cool technologies so if you like the content don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free contents like this and lastly you can find all the relevant links down in the description section and thanks for watching i hope to see you in the next videos